Hi, I'm Oscar Garza for Real to Red. Recently we had Dr. Sarah Weddington come to our campus to speak on leadership. As you may know, Weddington is the winning attorney for one of the U.S.'s most famous cases, Roe v. Wade. In that case, the U.S. Supreme Court held that there is a constitutional right of privacy for individuals to continue with a pregnancy or to terminate it. We appreciate Dr. Sarah Weddington coming to our campus and we appreciate this interview. Um, what are some of the challenges you faced as a woman in a man's political world? Well, first I think people just did not expect women to go into most of the fields I've been in. Uh, for example, if you had said to me my senior year in college, what are you going to do? I would have said I'm going to try to get eighth graders to love Beowulf. <laughs> but, and now I know I love teaching college seniors, but eighth grade was not where I was supposed to be. So I went to the dean of the little college I was attending in Abilene, Texas, and said, well, I think I want to go to law school. And he said, you can't. And I said, why not? I have very good grades. And he said, but no woman from this college has ever gone to law school. It would be too tough. So you know the moment I decided I was going to law school and got there in 1965, University of Texas in Austin with five other women in the entering class. Now it would be about 50%, but then we were such a small number. I had come from a situation where I played high school basketball, but at a time women were only allowed to run half court, and after two dribbles it was called traveling, <laughs> a technical <laughs> violation. And I was one of those people saying, why can't we keep running? And they would say, oh no, all that bounding and jiggling, and you know, it'd be too inappropriate. Yeah, inappropriate. <laughs> so um, now women do run full court. And at the Olympics, they did the half pipe. Uh, so it's exciting to see how women have expanded in in, in our sports. Second, I was thought at that point I'd be a public school teacher, and in the, uh, I am, but uh, not in the eighth grade. Uh, but they said, now if you get pregnant as a public school teacher, you'll have to quit. Women are not allowed to be pregnant in the classroom. I thought that was ridiculous. I thought women could walk and talk and be pregnant and teach all at the same time. So eventually in the legislature, I helped to pass a bill that said you cannot fire a public school teacher just because they're pregnant. Well, I had gone down and applied for credit card when I finished law school. And the man across the desk said, now you'll have to get your husband's signature. I said, I don't think so. He's come back from military service. I'm going to put him through law school, but right now all the income is mine. And they said, no, you have to get his signature. So you see, I had to run for the legislature, pass the equal credit bill, and then go back and get my credit card. <laughs> and so I look back at the ideas of society about what was appropriate for women then. It's why I'm often invited to speak during Women's History Month, because I've been a part of so many historic events. And now to look at the expanded opportunities for women in so many different fields and more and more in leadership. At the time I was in college, you would never have believed a woman would be head of a public institution like this one. And sure enough, there is. And so I think it's an opportunity for women to use their best talents in all kinds of leadership positions. What did your parents think of you going to law school? I mean, you said that lots of the admissions people were kind of iffy about it, but what, what, what was the, your parents' perspective on the whole thing? Well, my father's a Methodist preacher, uh, but he was very much encouraging of what I was trying to do and of being involved and interested in leadership. My mother at that point uh, had, was a high school coach for a women's basketball team. Uh, later she got her masters and later, so they were very proud of me. But they also did counsel. It would be difficult, it would be very tough, and there would be those who didn't appreciate a woman trying to take a seat in law school. What would you say to lots of the young ladies here in the Valley? There's, there's lots of uh, what we call machismo, lots mm -hmm. of, of male dominance here in the Valley. It's right. very strong down here. What would you say to them, that they, what kind of obstacles that they're going to face, or, or what kind of words of encouragement would you give them? Okay. Uh, first, I think we have to say that attitudes that limit women in areas that are just ridiculous 
is not unique to the valley. Uh, that <laughs> certainly is found in lots of different areas. And so I think you have to be a fairly strong person within yourself um, to, to show people what you really can do. Second, I like a saying that says, you should ask yourself, what can I do today that will give me more opportunities tomorrow? An education will give you more opportunities tomorrow. And sometimes if you're really good, even though people might tend to misjudge how good you are as a woman, I think with an education you have a better chance of showing what you really can do, demonstrating that. So an education is very important. And third, I think there are lots of community needs, whether you look at health issues, education issues, all kinds of civic and social issues. And women have often been leaders in those, if not out front, then behind the scenes. And whether a woman would choose to be out front or behind the scenes, I still think it's a very important aspect. I think we all want to know we've made a difference, and I certainly know I have. And I think many women are doing the same. I have one more question, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I know when the University of Texas Pan American was um, uh, joined to the University of Texas system, uh, one of the stipulations was that the University of Texas Pan American would not be allowed to ever have a law school. But what do you what do you think of that stipulation? Stipulations can be made and can be changed. Uh, and so it may be that someday they will have a law school because it's an expanding area of the state. It certainly is one that's going to need a lot of legal talent. So I know it was a stipulation, but I just know that through the years things change. Um, I don't know who the personalities were involved in that, but at some point they won't be around. Uh, and certainly the political strength of the valley is expanding with the number of elected representatives who probably would not favor that. Well, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. This is when I was in the state legislature. So this is the front of the House of Representatives. And this is when I was general counsel of um, the USDA, US Department of Agriculture. So I'm on a horseback trip with the forest wow. rangers. And they had the best stories. You know, it was the bear that broke into the cabin, the bear who got away, the bear who did this or that. And they were so interesting. Um, Let's see, this is a piece I did on leadership, which is part of what I'll be talking about tonight. And so it's talking about leadership as a star with the W's, oh. so my name. But it's saying that leadership is something that emanates in all directions from a star, from someone who's willing. Now, have I done enough or shall I?